Hello guys, Craig Frost here and welcome back to another Juicy Tuts tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to install a PS3 controller onto Windows to use just like you would any other controller. So what you want to do before you do this is have your controller plugged into your PC via USB already and let it install any drivers that it might try to install. Also, if you want to run this through a Bluetooth dongle, which you don't have to do, you can run it through USB, um, have the Bluetooth dongle plugged in as well before we start this. Then what you want to do is there's a few things we need to install first. So once everything with your Bluetooth driver is installed and your controller is plugged in, Come to this website here, it's the Microsoft.NET Work Framework is what we want to install. So just click download and once it's downloaded, run the file and install it. You might already have this installed, I do, so it says it's already installed so you don't need to do it, but it's worth checking. So the next thing is Visual C++. We need to install this the same way as again, so click time 64. If you're a 64-bit operating system, if not go for times 86 and run that. Again, I have it installed, so it's asking me to repair or uninstall. But if you don't have it, it will ask you to install. And next is the DirectX end user runtime web installer. Don't install any optional extras, click no thanks and continue. And then download it and run the file once again. And this time click accept the agreement, but on the next page, make sure you uncheck the box which says install Bing Bar, because we don't want that. You don't need it. All you need is this software. Once again, I have this installed, so I don't need to install it. So we got those three installed. Now, if you're on Windows 7 or below, you need to install the Xbox 360 controllers for Windows. So select your operating system here and click download and install it. If you're on Windows 8 or later, it's already included, so you don't need to worry. So that's everything that we need to do to have the pre-install ready. Now come to this forum page, and this is the um, driver for the PS3 controller by Scarlet Crush Productions, which is what we need to do to run the controller as a service on the computer. So first of all, click download latest version and download latest update. I'm gonna download them both just to make sure we have the latest thing. Now you'll need something like WinRAR or 7-zip, so just Google it and download WinRAR. That's what I personally use because it will download as a 7-zip file, which you won't be able to do with just basic Windows. So the two files that we have downloaded here is the, the update package and the base package. So what we want to do is just extract them both into a normal folder. You can do this within the WinRAR software, but I prefer to just work with folders. So just keep track of them and just check the name it says update. So we want to open the update one and inside the SCP server and bin folder, we want to highlight everything and copy it all, close it, open up the base package, go to the same bin folder, right click, paste and replace everything that it wants to replace. So that's what we have left. You can delete the two zip folders and the update package. We just want this base package now. Now the SCP driver software is here what we want to use, but if you right click properties, it may say it came from another computer and your computer might try to block it. So what we want to do is trick it into thinking that your computer made it. So if you send it the SCP server whole folder to a compressed folder, delete the original, then extract it again. And once it's extracted, delete the zip folder. This will then trick your computer into thinking that you created the file yourself. It just makes sure that everything installs properly. So if you now right click on the SCP driver file and go to properties, it will no longer say it may have came from another computer. So now this whole bin file is all we're interested in. So copy the bin folder, go to your local disk, go to program files, and then you're gonna right click, make a new folder and call it scarlet.crushproductions because they're the people that made this software and inside there is where you're gonna paste the bin folder. So you're gonna right click and paste. And you will need administrator rights to do this. So inside the bin folder, go back to that same SCP driver application and right click run as administrator, just to make sure you have everything installed on the highest level. So click yes. And then you want configure service and Bluetooth driver checked if you're going to do it on Bluetooth. If not, you just need configure service and you only need to tick force install if you're later than Windows 7 or earlier than Windows 7, I should say. Otherwise, you don't need to check it. 
So now it should all be installed. Double click SCP monitor and you'll see that your controller, which is already plugged in, is showing up here on the SCP monitor. If I unplug it, it says it's reserved. And if I plug it back in, it will show up here as pad one and that it's charging. And if we go to devices, you can see that the Xbox 360 controller is showing up. And if I go to controller settings and properties, as I move the controller around, you can see all the button inputs moving here, just like it would from an Xbox 360 controller. So if you're gonna use it by USB, you're good to go. Now, if you want to do it by Bluetooth, it may already be working by this point. All you need to do is unplug your controller and see if it connects. However, it will not work if this host address says disconnected. Um, if it says disconnected, it means your Bluetooth uh, dongle is not yet supported. So to fix that, we're going to go to this folder called Zardig and open the application called Zardig, device, load preset, and you want to double click this Bluetooth configuration folder. Then go to options, list all devices, and select your Bluetooth dongle. Now I know this is mine because in device manager, this or in devices and printers, this is what shows up as my Bluetooth dongle. Now before you do this, you must know that once you replace the driver on this Bluetooth dongle, it will only work with your PS3 controller. It will no longer work with anything else. So it will be a dedicated Bluetooth dongle just for your PlayStation controllers. You'll need another one if you want to connect your mouse, keyboard, phone, anything else. But anyway, you click replace driver and that will then replace the driver on the dongle with what it needs to pick up the PS3 controller. Now in SCP monitor, you might see it already has a host address now, which means if I unplug my PS3 controller, it should pick up. Sometimes it doesn't, so just plug it back in again and then unplug it again. And now it should pop up as a Bluetooth device. And there you go, Bluetooth, and it says the battery is full. So now if we come back to the devices and printers, and you can see the Xbox controller for Windows, game controller settings, go back to the same properties. The controller is not plugged in anymore, but I am using everything and it's good to go. You're ready to game, play some Rocket League or play any game you want that has support for Xbox 360 controller, which is quite a lot of them now. And you can just play wirelessly. Um, it might be worth making a shortcut for your SCP monitor on your start menu or something like that. And once you click on this, it will always open up in the taskbar at the bottom. So if you just come down to the bottom to open it, just click there and that's how you open it. But you don't actually need to open it. Every time you start your computer up, all you need to do is press the PlayStation button on your controller to start searching for your Bluetooth dongle and it will disconnect automatically. Or you can plug in by USB, of course, if you want to charge or not even use a Bluetooth dongle. Anyway, I hope you found this tutorial useful. I know I've gone quite quick, but hopefully you can pause the video at any point that you need to. Um, thank you for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye bye.